who inspires me to write and perform music, it's kind of all over the place. I think I tend to gravitate more towards the sonic element of music before I do lyrics. That's just kind of what reels me in, um, which I hear a lot of the exact opposite from other singer-songwriter peers, but I have been that way since I can remember. I remember hearing, you know, um, the drums on Paul Simon records when I was a kid, hand drums drew me in. I remember hearing Daft Punk on the radio as a kid and just loving like the synth sounds. So typically I have to be reeled in sonically, not always, but um, some artists that are really inspiring me right now are Adrienne Lanker and she has a solo project under her name as well as a band called Big Thief and both of those acts are amazing. She's doing amazing stuff. Um, who else? A couple artists out of England. One is named Jordan McCampa and the other is Leanne Lahavas. So they're both solo artists but they perform with bands and they're both super awesome songwriters. They're kind of inspirations to me because they are drawing elements of this thoughtfulness in terms of writing, but also they're definitely pop artists. So I kind of like that breaking breaking down the the wall of, you know, what pop music is. Sometimes I'll I'll tell someone that I play pop music and I can see the switch in their in their face of just considering it to be top 40 pop. But there's a lot of weird, cool, offbeat stuff going on out there and that's what I hope to be part of. One of the bigger challenges that I have found in my career is finding a sense of balance between things. And I mean that in that when you're a smaller independent artist, you really have to be your biggest fan. You have to be your biggest advocate, which um, creates a problem as a creative person. That's, that's not typically RMO. It's usually a lot of back and forth. So I think, you know, mostly right now, a lot of my days are spent doing more researching on venues or just the industry as a whole and sending emails, just sending so many emails. I spend more time doing all of that admin work than I do writing and performing right now, which can be frustrating. But, you know, there, there are some really good parts to the admin side of things. Being your own boss and being your own advocate can be awesome. But it's obviously not the part of the career that I fell in love with. The part that I fell in love with was writing and performing. So kind of finding a balance right now between the two sides of that in my career has been a challenge. As far as other creative pursuits, aside from a career in music, um, I'm pretty much interested in everything to tell you the truth. So I'm hoping kind of a long-term and over overarching goal of mine as a musician is to do a lot of cross collaboration between different forms of arts. So I've, I've been thinking a lot lately about, I grew up dancing and in theater and some ways to kind of connect the dots between those arts. And I'm really interested in doing some performance um, with other artists. So whether that be visual or dancers or acting, I'd really like to to open the floodgates on a project like that. I haven't quite gotten to anything quite that big yet, but I'm hoping after the release of a multi-track project that I'll be able to kind of group that collaboration together and make something happen. So we shall see. One of the coolest things that I have recently been discovering in terms of the local music scene and its relation to the, the music scene on a greater scale is just the influence and presence that Michigan has in terms of a greater scale music scene. I've been doing a ton of research for the past year or so, just really diving into venues across the country and different smaller independent artists and you know what the shape of their career has looked like. And uh, like among all of my research, there's always something bringing it back to Michigan, always an artist that started out here or toured here for a while or a connection to a festival or you name it. There's just I didn't realize Michigan's weight in in the game, which is really cool. Um, almost every time I play a show out of town where I don't know anyone in a listening room or a smaller venue, I mentioned that I'm from Northern Michigan and somewhere in the room, someone 
you know, can name 10, 10 mutual people or a venue that I've played or a festival that I grew up going to. So it's pretty cool to have that kind of commonality in a, in a industry like this. So when it comes to the music that I'm writing right now, I kind of think I'm in an interesting spot where I'm looking back and drawing influence from a lot of the music that I was raised on and that sort of style and a lot of what was available in the local music scene in Northern Michigan, which leaned more towards singer songwriter style, folk roots, um, even like 70s folk style. And also what I have had a craving for in my 20s, which has been contemporary pop music, totally opposite side of the spectrum. So now I feel like I'm kind of coming back to my roots a little bit and trying to take elements of singer songwriter style that I like and meet them in the middle with what I have been working on in my 20s. So I'm hoping to, to create thoughtful and vulnerable lyrics that you know, provide an element of storytelling like plenty of singer-songwriter style music does while keeping intact my my love for um, pop production and sounds um, in terms of evoking a mood. I really love, I love what pop music does in that way. So trying to kind of find a balance between the two of those concepts. One, two, three, four. Cold as it 
baby, you'll be singing while I'm playing this song. Hey, it's strong all along. No. Yeah.